Are you looking to replace or upgrade your vehicle's clutch? We're here to help you pick out the right one. Hey, this is Carl from Summit Racing, and we know that choosing the right clutch can seem like a difficult task, but just understanding some basics can go a long way to make things easier. We'll help you answer questions like, what style of clutch should I go with? What kind of flywheel should I get and how can I ensure it's compatible with my clutch? Will I need to upgrade my bell housing? Do I need any additional safety equipment? In most stock type installations, the correct clutch kit can be looked up by application. If you're looking to purchase clutch components in a non-stock application, you'll need to supply us with the following information. Input shaft spline count and diameter, necessary disc diameter, type of flywheel, and the vehicle type and use. The first thing we should do is define what a clutch is. The clutch is a mechanism for readily engaging and disengaging a shaft with or from another shaft or rotating part. Your typical automotive driveline clutch will consist of the following parts. A flywheel, a clutch disc, a pressure plate, a throw-up bearing or thrust bearing, and a pilot bushing. When the operator presses the clutch pedal, the clutch release mechanism pulls or pushes on the clutch release lever or fork. The fork moves the release bearing into the center of the pressure plate, causing the pressure plate to pull away from the clutch disc, releasing the disc from the flywheel. The crankshaft can then continue to turn without turning the clutch disc and transmission input shaft. The opposite process happens to make clutch engagement happen. Let's start with the flywheel. The flywheel is a critical part when it comes to clutch performance. Much like a brake rotor, the flywheel creates a friction surface for the clutch disc to engage against. It is very important that when an old flywheel is used with a new clutch that it is also resurfaced. If this is not done, clutch failure will likely be unavoidable. We'll come back to that in a moment. The weight of the flywheel can also have a drastic effect on how the engine performs. Heavier flywheels are designed for street, drag race, and tractor pull applications. Their weight keeps engine RPM up during shifts and will increase engine torque due to inertia. Lighter flywheels, such as aluminum, are designed for use in oval track, road race, and extremely lightweight drag cars. This makes the engine's RPM react much more quickly and will make the engine rev much quicker. Aluminum flywheels are typically multi-piece units that allow for replacement of ring gears and or friction surfaces. Also available are dual mass flywheels. These units are known for increased driver comfort due to vibration and shock absorption. However, under spirited driving, racing, and high horsepower applications, these are failure prone. As I said earlier, in order to reuse an existing flywheel, it must be resurfaced before installing that new clutch set. The proper resurfacing of a flywheel does not involve a traditional brake lathe. Excessive clutch slippage, whether it be during engagement or due to lack of holding power, will cause premature clutch disc failure. Slippage causes uncontrollable heat that causes metal warpage and fatigue known as hot spots. These hot spots rise up causing an uneven surface, leading to yet more slippage and ultimately complete failure. These hotspots cause the cutting bit of a typical brake lathe to jump and or vibrate. If you want to reuse your existing flywheel, an actual flywheel grinding machine must be used to achieve a fresh new surface suitable for a new clutch disc. The next component we want to cover is the clutch disc, also called friction lining. It consists of a splined hub and a round metal plate covered with friction material. The splines in the center of the disc mesh with the splines on the input shaft of the transmission. This makes the input shaft and disc turn together. In order to pick the correct one, you'll need to know the spline count of your input shaft. In most cases, this can be identified by the year, make, and model of your vehicle. But be aware that in the case of a transmission swap, such as a Tremec TKO, T56, etc., you may need to get the spline count visually. There are two basic types of clutch discs produced, ones with a sprung center section and ones with solid center sections. The sprung version is the most common and is designed to absorb the vibration and shock produced by the initial engagement of the clutch. The spring hub acts as an absorption device. As power is applied, the springs will compress. 
A solid center disc type is going to have very harsh engagement and is typically used in race applications. This will create a much quicker reacting clutch and also makes the disc much stronger. The friction material applied to the clutch disc is also a critical component to how the disc will perform. These materials could have a drastic effect on how harsh the engagement of the disc is and the amount of holding power it has. All of these elements will determine the driving characteristics of the disc. Organic are best for street, Kevlar best for performance street, centered iron for limited street and race, and centered bronze for race. In today's clutch market, manufacturers have many choices available in clutch disc materials and designs to build a clutch specific to the needs and uses of their customers. In the past, larger diameter discs were thought to be the only way to get more surface area and holding power. Those proved to be heavy and thus slow revving, resulting in some power loss. Moving on to pressure plates. A pressure plate is the spring-loaded device in a clutch assembly that can either engage or disengage the clutch disc from the flywheel. Pressure plates are another key factor in how a clutch will perform in a vehicle. These will come with different tension springs and engagement finger designs. Just like the many disc designs available, the plate design will also have a drastic effect on the clutch drivability and strength. The disc will either be clamped to the flywheel or spin freely depending on the position of the pressure plate. This, of course, is all determined by the position of the clutch pedal in the vehicle. The most common type of pressure plate used today is the diaphragm design. Diaphragm design plates are used most in street and performance applications. These pressure plates offer very good holding power without extreme pedal pressures. This is due to the design of the fingers and the way they distribute force across a larger surface area. The next style we want to cover are Borg and Beck pressure plates. This is one of the earliest pressure plate designs. These pressure plates are known for strength, quick engagement, and for being a compact alternative to a long style plate. But they require a significant amount of foot pedal pressure and typically are not recommended for street use anymore. The preferred pressure plate for competition style clutch systems are the long style pressure plates. These are the most versatile out of the designs available. These units make it possible to have a plate that uses heavy springs for more holding power, while at the same time not requiring extreme pedal pressures. This is achieved by the finger design, which offers much more leverage than its Morgenbeck equivalent. Sometimes referred to as the release bearing, the throw-out bearing is a ball bearing and collar assembly. It slides on the input bearing retainer sleeve that surrounds the input shaft and controls engagement and disengagement of the pressure plate. This is all actuated by the combination of the clutch pedal and clutch fork. It is important that this bearing be replaced when installing a new clutch assembly. Anytime you're doing a custom conversion on a vehicle from automatic to manual, you'll need to consider the method for clutch release. Historically, mechanical clutch linkage cables perform this duty. The newest designs incorporate hydraulic units which consist of a master and a slave cylinder. In swap applications, Willwood makes the correct universal parts to complete these conversions. Also, many late model vehicles today are using a hydraulic release bearing as original equipment. And while just the bearing can be serviced while replacing the clutch, it's best to replace the whole hydraulic assembly due to the time and cost involved to access it again at a later date should it begin to leak. Finally, an often overlooked part during the installation of a new clutch is the pilot bushing. It's designed to maintain proper input shaft alignment. It is pressed into the rear of the crankshaft and is critical to proper transmission operation. A worn or failed pilot bushing or bearing causes noise, hard shifting, chatter on engagement, and premature disc failure. If you currently have a bronze pilot bushing and a pilot bearing is available, we highly recommend the upgrade. Let's talk about compatibility between the pressure plate and flywheel. This is often not thought about during the selection of the new clutch. When you're interested in a clutch that uses either a Borgenbeck or long type plate, it is important to make sure the flywheel being used has a bolt pattern that will accept the new design pressure plate. Typically, the long style pressure plate will be the one the flywheel does not accept. Borgenbeck and diaphragm pressure plates usually use the same bolt pattern to attach to the flywheel. 
OE flywheels have only one bolt pattern and are made from nodular cast iron, and while it's heavy and maintains enough inertia for street driving, it is not strong enough to withstand high RPM usage or heavy pressure plate spring pressures. Aftermarket flywheels are made from steel and many times offer multiple bolt patterns. These allow you to upgrade to larger discs and aftermarket pressure plates. They can also be SFI approved for racing. Multi-disc clutch systems are another option available. Previously only common to race vehicles, these multi-disc clutches offer the ultimate in clutch control. These are typically sold as complete assemblies, including flywheel, due to their uniqueness. The street versions can be sold by application, but the drag race versions are best left selected after consulting the manufacturer that produces the clutch. The first option in this category are what's known as a street twin. Street twins consist of a unique flywheel, multiple discs of the same or varying materials or designs, a floater plate, and usually a diaphragm style pressure plate. Floater plates are driven by and lock into the flywheel using a spring steel strap to prevent rattling when being held in the disengaged position. Next up are button clutches used in circle track racing. These are lightweight, small diameter, multi-disc units. These units are preferred due to their low inertia and ease of revving quickly off the turns. These should never be considered for street use as they have no sprung hubs and aggressive disc materials causing harsh engagement. They may have a unique flywheel or may be sandwiched against a flex plate when bolted to the crankshaft. Lastly are centrifugally assisted clutches, sometimes called a slipper clutch. These are commonly used throughout professional motorsports such as drag racing and sled pulling. These clutches are very adjustable and will increase clamp load as the engine RPM increases. They are expensive, very high maintenance, and require a broad learning curve with data acquisition capability. Surrounding most clutch assemblies is a proper bell housing. The bell housing is a vital component in manual transmission applications. Not only does it align and couple the transmission to the engine, but many times it produces the pivot point for the clutch arm. It also provides protection from weather and road debris, keeping it out of the clutch assembly. It can also protect your vehicle from a serious clutch failure. Heavy duty bell housings are known as a blow shield or a clutch can. These are typically a steel, safety rated bell housing. They're thick and heavy and are designed to contain any possibility of a clutch explosion which, if unprotected, can severely damage your vehicle. There are times that the bulk and size of these safety bell housings require modifications to your vehicle's floor pan for proper installation. Stronger, lighter weight versions are also available and made from titanium. This dramatically increases the price tag but are extremely useful when building a lightweight vehicle is a priority. Adaptive bell housings can also be used in order to mate motors and transmissions from different manufacturers. A company called QuickTime specializes in these kinds of bell housings. For example, a commonly requested swap is to put an OE T56 six-speed transmission behind a Generation 1 small block Chevy or Ford. Finally, there are a few items that are not going to be supplied with the purchase of a new clutch kit. The additional purchase of these items is considered mandatory to ensure the installation is successful. Some of these we spoke about in the video. They are pilot bushing or bearing, pressure plate and flywheel bolts, a throwout bearing, and a cable or quadrant for the Mustangs. At this point, you should now have a pretty good idea of what you need to do to get your vehicle's clutch system upgraded or replaced. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.